Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Here's the Bling presents another Toning University segment. I am Eddie O'Hanian. I'm going to be your coach for today. I'm going to be hosting. Uh, camera should be coming on here in a moment, I think. Nope, I'm having some troubles. All right, we'll deal with that later. We're going to be talking about all things toning, going to be talking about how to figure out how to go over blonde, how to go over red, how to go over current trends that are popular right now that the clients are coming in asking for. This is going to be using the all nutrient color line that we distribute here. And uh, the two things that we're going to be talking about primarily with the hair color is going to be the cream permanent color. And also we're going to be talking about the demi glaze liquid keratin color as well. So those are going to be the two, pr two primary drivers of the toning university. Some of you use the cream color. Some of you use the demi color. Uh, it's interchangeable. We'll be going over all of those things. There are a couple of things I want to get out of the way real quick. Okay. There is a chat function that anybody that got a question, please go ahead and ask in the chat uh, towards the end, when we finish, then we will open it up to Q&A discussion. But during the program, a lot of the times I get asked questions and it's going to get answered automatically. So don't be shy. I won't bite you that hard for asking whatever question you want to ask. It's a lot of fun. This is to be more laid back than anything else. All right. And we're going to get right back or we're going to get right into it right now. Some of the products that a lot of us need for when we're toning that we don't think about are very, very essential to the coloring process in general. So what are some of those products to start off with when we, why do we tone and why do we need to tone a toner is to correct balance or add to a pigment or a color that's missing. Okay. Toning is a form of correcting or for balancing. It's also a form of finishing the coloring process. Now, toning is done at the end, but to toning to finish and complete a process is only as good as what you start the process with. What are some of the things that can mess up some of our coloring process? Well, there are three things that exist on the hair as a barrier that block us from having the end result that we are looking to achieve. One of those barriers is product buildup, whether it's shampoo, conditioner, or some kind of retail product. Some people put powders, uh, uh, volumizing products and whatnots. A second thing that could be a barrier on the hair is somebody's natural oils that they just produce. Some people have dry scalp, some people have oilier scalp. The third thing that can exist on somebody's scalp that could be blocking the coloring process is uh, static, okay? In the summertime, there's a lot of humidity, so there isn't as much static in the hair, but there still exists some. In the wintertime, the, there, there's not a lot of moisture in the air. It's just drier, yeah? So then that's going to give you a lot of static electricity, and that's going to build up in the hair, and that could be a barrier that's blocking the color from getting into the hair, or it could be resisting some of the lightener that you put on somebody if you're trying to lighten them up. And then when you go afterwards to tone them out, that could be a problem. So the first thing we're going to start off with is going to be the clarifying shampoo. That's going to chelate the hair, which means it's going to pre-soften the hair. That's going to break all of that contact, all of that barrier. It's also going to balance out the pH of that hair. All right. The second thing that we got is a clarifying treatment. That clarifying treatment is designed to restore that pH balance that gets balanced out and to retain that balance throughout the process. So that's super important. When you're clarifying somebody before the treatment, uh, before a coloring process, you actually want to wash them first, emulsify them, rinse that out run the treatment through their hair, leave that on for about three minutes, five minutes, depending on the type of hair that they got. Thinner, finer, softer hair, you'd leave it on less time. Thicker, uh, coarser hair, you could leave it on longer. You wanna rinse out that treatment and then you wanna give it a light shampoo to make sure that that treatment has been fully rinsed out. Otherwise, sometimes there will be some residual left over in there and it'll try to continually balance out the pH. And during oxidation, during lift, that'll fight you. Now. 
during especially the summer months, doing the treatment last and keeping that residual effect going in there would be really nice because then you can keep somebody's hair resisting the natural elements. Equivalently, during the winter months, it'll help protect against that dryness. Moving along, hair protonizer. It's liquid keratin in a bottle. It's awesome, awesome leave-in. Now, what makes it such an awesome leave-in is that keratin is gonna restore the core strength of the hair and of the cuticle, especially when we're lightening. That is so important because we're ripping up the, you know, the outer layer of the cuticle all the time. So it'll help rebuild and strengthen that hair. The protein complex, just as its name states, that's the equivalent of your deep conditioners. Your protein complex is super important because it'll restore all of the vital nutrition that the hair needs. The pure oil is an essential fatty acid based. And why I keep getting asked all the time about the pure oil. You have four different kinds of oil. I know we talk about this all the time, but it's important to review. The pure oil is a conditioning oil. It's an essential fatty acid based oil. When you have mineral or essential fatty acid, those are 100% for conditioning. When you have, uh, uh, what do you call it? Alcohol or silicone-based oils, those are super important for styling, okay? Everything has its place in life. So essential fatty acid in English, what does that mean? That means it's gonna protect the elasticity of the hair, the ability for the hair to stretch. Now, when you're lightening, you really need to make sure you're not overstretching that hair. Otherwise, it's going to snap, and that's where breakage comes from, right? And the pure oil has a 100 different uses to it. So whether you're using it for a couple of drops for more shine, whether you're using a couple of grams for some more moisture, whether you're using it to dilute down or thin out the viscosity of some of your formula, look, when it comes to lightening, when it comes to bleaching, a lot of people don't like mixing equal parts. They like their bleach thinner. If you're going to make your bleach thinner, okay, fine. Generally, most people will add more developer into the bleach to thin it out. But what you don't realize sometimes is that by adding more developer and thinning out your bleach that way, you're actually making it more aggressive because it's going to absorb into the cuticle, into the hair more because it's thinner, right? Alternatively, you could mix bleach the way it was designed to be mixed, which is equal parts. Yeah, okay, fine. That gets thick. You could thin it out with the pure oil without losing strength or the balance of how it's supposed to react onto the hair. That could be an option for you. Because of all the different uses that the pure oil has, you could also use it as, uh, how do you call it? Like a, a, a lotion. You could use it on the on on your skin, on your hands, you know, on on your uh, body. So it it's got a, that essential fatty acid is really good. It's got a lot of different uses. Another important tool that we forget about is the clear zero stroke zero zero neutral clear. I know it's got a long name. Most of us refer to it as the clear or as to the triple zero. What's amazing about this? You can instantly shear out the pigment in a color. And that gives you more of a, well, a sheer effect, if you will, or a pastel version of that color. So you could take a cream permanent color, add clear into it, and that'll convert that, 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 that deep, rich effect into a more sheared out, into a more pastel toned effect. And that's something we're gonna be talking about a little bit later, but I wanted to show everybody that that is really important. The other thing that a lot of people skip over a lot is the elevare or the elevare. Everybody says it a little bit differently. I have no idea what the right way is. I don't think they know what the right way is, how to pronounce this thing. I'm calling it elevare just because it's easier for me to say it that way. But again, it's a strengthening cream. It's an extra lightening cream. Adding a little bit into your formula will enhance your formula, make it stronger. Adding a lot into your formula is going to start eating away at your pigment, 
creatively, sometimes this is really fun to use because especially with a lot of these fantasy color trends right now, that's what you need to do. Look, when we say fantasy trends, that's exactly that we're saying. These things don't exist. We're just making them up. And there's a hundred different ways of making these things up. So uh, we're going to be using this a lot. Because we're going to be using that a lot, we're going to need some lightener control, LC. The lightener control, LC for short, that's what we use in our bleaches, okay, or in our lighteners. You use it because bleaching and lightening, it, it dries out the hair. And the more you dry out the hair, more brittle it becomes. The more brittle it becomes, the more prone it's going to be to breakage, okay? So in order to protect the bleach from over drying out the hair and causing some inadverted breakage, lightener control is going to add moisture back into the hair. It's got amino acids. It's got keratin. It's going to strengthen the hair during that process, preventing or at least resisting the lightener from becoming too aggressive on some compromised hair or on some regular hair, making it too compromised afterwards, right? How do you use it? This is the question I get asked all the time. How do you use it? Well, the thing is, a lot of people don't measure their lightener. A lot of people don't measure their bleach. Why is that important to do? For consistency's sake. If you've got, if you're trying to achieve a certain level of lift and you're not achieving that level of lift, how are you going to know unless you have some kind of measure, some kind of log of what you've done prior before? The only way to know that is to write down your measurements on it from a scale, right? You can't say I eyeballed this much today. I eyeballed this much last time. And, and, and how are you going to know what an eyeball measurement is? That's very inconsistent. So for consistency's sake, I, I strongly, strongly recommend if nobody has been measuring, start doing it. You'll achieve much better results that way. With that said, However much you mix, if you mix half the amount in lightener control. So for simple sake, and you could break it down from there. If you mix one ounce or if you mix 30 grams, then you would take a half an ounce or you would take 15 grams of lightener control. So you would use half the amount in whatever it is that you're measuring in whatever it is that you're mixing. And then you add your developer equal parts. So how does that look like? Okay. One ounce of lightener equal parts would be one ounce of developer. Because you put one ounce of lightener, you would put a half an ounce of lightener control. I'm going to switch mics. I think I'm having some technical difficulty. Bear with me one moment. We're going to do one of these and we're going to do one of those. Okay. So may not here we go having some audio difficulty okay so that's the way that goes now with that said what you're going to want to do is use that it's it's not going to mess up what you're doing as in the way of uh how would you call it you know, in the way of you, you need to add a higher developer or you need to put more uh, lightener or anything like that. Look, the ratios, just like I said them, it's very simple. It's very straightforward. Don't overthink it, okay? When we get into toning, a lot of people ask about 10 volume developer in toning. Yes, you can use 10 volume as a toner, but 10 volume is not designed to give you true toning 10 volume at the end of the day doesn't know what you're trying to do it's trying to give you up to one level of lift that's permanent color it's trying to give you up to one level of lift because it's trying to activate the ammonia that's in your permanent color okay when you're using cpl developer the color processing lotion that's designed to negate the little ammonia that exists and that turns it into a demi-permanent color, a deposit-only color. That is what's going to give you true toning, okay? So CPL comes in two different versions. You've got its standard version here, what's displayed on screen. 
or the white one as we refer to it as, and then you've got the blue based CPL developer. The blue based developers are something new to all nutrient or fairly new, you know, in the past year to all nutrient, they come in CPL, a 20 volume version and a 40 volume version. For the Toning University's sake, we're going to only be talking about the blue CPL developer. We may reference the 20 and 40 later on for creative differences, but those are all the tools that you're going to need. So to, re to recap real quick, you need your clarifying system, you need your protonizer, uh, your pure oil, your protein complex, clear, elevator, and lightener control. You got your CPL developers and you are good to go. With all nutrient, we have a lot of different series of colors, okay? The main things that we're going to be going over is going to be pretty much everything on the left half of the screen. Why? Those are going to be more of your ashier tones. Why are there so many ashy tones, everybody asks me? Well, you've got your slate series. You've got your cool series, your natural pearls, your beiges, okay? Each one of those represent a different type of pigment base that's going to neutralize something on the color wheel. If you have brassiness, there are so many different types of brassiness that we don't realize, all right? And when you're going around your color wheel, when you have your swatch book, the, 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 the inside cover of the swatch book is so key. It is so important because it's got the two biggest information pieces on there that you can ever need. You've got your color wheel and you've got your natural pigmentation chart, your natural contribution pigment chart. That's going to show you at every single level what color is going to do as you go to lighten or lift. Okay. Now, as you go to lighten and lift, you're going to be throwing those pigments that you don't visually see. We all know this, but man, do we forget about this all the time. How many clients do you have that have level five, level six hair, brown hair, and they're like, I don't want to see any red. Good God, woman, that's all you have in your hair is red. How many people come in with level five, level four, level five hair, and they want to be blonde and they don't want to see any warmth? You got to break through all of that warmth before you get to any level blonde. It's impossible to do. It's an impossible thing to ask for, but everybody's always asking about it. So when you're hitting your lightning, when you're hitting your lift, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the problems comes from the simple fact that it just didn't lighten or lift enough. Now, why can that happen? Well, you got to think about it this way. When you're lightening, when you're lifting, it depends what type of hair you're working on. And this is why the pre-clarification process is so important because if somebody comes in and they haven't washed their hair in a couple of days, yeah, of course it's going to feel good. Ye they may have product in their hair. You may not see how much frizz, flyaway damage. You may not be able to touch their hair and truly feel how much porosity they got going on in there. So that's craziness, right? Healthy hair is always going to grab warm because it's got all primary pigments in there, that balance. When hair is porous, when it's damaged, that means it's missing its primary pigments. The bigger pigments are uh, blue and red, okay? When the hair is damaged, it's going to be missing a lot, some of that blue, but some of that's still going to be in there because it's big pigment molecules. Red is going to be torn out. All you've got left over is that golden tones. When you go to put an ashy color over there and an ashy color usually has a green or a blue base, you mix that with yellow, which is what's going to be left over because it's the smallest molecule. Blue and yellow equal green. Okay, if we go back to our color chart over here and you look on the left hand side, yellow and blue equals green. That's how you make it. That's why damaged hair always throws ashy. Now, when we're going through our pigmentations chart, okay, your slate series has a blue olive base. Blue olive base is in essence a teal. A teal is a blue green. When you're lifting somebody and they get to level eight, all right, if we come over, we're going to flip back and forth a little bit over here. But if we go to our contribution chart, our, 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 our pigmentation chart, 
level eight, level seven, level eight is very orange. It's more brassy than it is blonde. Okay. That's where the slate series comes in. Your cool series is a blue, blue violet base. It's got that double blue base. That's going to be when you get really uh, more somebody into like a solid level eight where you're seeing gold and brassiness, that orangeness in there. It's not heavy on orange. It's not heavy on gold. It's just a, like, like a balance in between. And it's a really hard read, but you got to pay attention to that. If they have more orange, that's the slate series. If they've got that nice balance, that's going to be the cool series. The pearl series has got a blue violet base. Okay. That's your pearl series. When you're going into your contributing pigment chart, that's going to be somebody who's really more of a yellow. That's maybe, maybe a hint of orange or a hint of brassiness in there. That's where the Pearl series comes in. And then your beige series. And I'm going to also uh, talk about the Mocha series for a second, because if we go over to the color chart, when you're looking at the beige series, both colors live in that series, both the beige and the mocha, because it's got a straight violet base to it. That straight violet base, okay, what, what, what is the difference between beige and mocha? Nothing other than mocha only goes to level seven. Your, be, your beige series starts at level eight and goes up to level 10, all right? When you hit levels five, six, and seven, you've got more brown in there. Blonde doesn't truly start to level eight. And this is a great example of how they both share the same violet base, but one has got a natural, the mocha has got that natural violet, whereas the beige series got that straight violet. And that is very important when you get back to your toning, your, your contributing pigments, that's when you hit your true level 10. All right. So now accents and mixers, when we're going to get into talking about toning and stuff, why accent mixers become important and why people get nervous or scared because they think, Oh, it's blonde hair. And if I add too much of this, it's automatically going to turn into uh, violet or blue or green. Well, it all comes down to mixing ratios and measurements. If you're measuring, you're never going to go wrong. If you're measuring, you're going to be able to control exactly how much or how little help you need from these accent colors. Now, I personally always recommend to measure with grams because it's a smaller measurement. It's more controllable. It's more customizable. When you're trying to be creative, it's a lot easier to be that way with the grams because they're single digit numbers. But that those numbers add up real quick and people get thrown off. They get nervous. So that's why they prefer ounces. And that's fine. But if you really, really, really think about it, you're dealing in decimal points on a scale. It's practically the same thing. Okay. So point 10, point 20, point 30, all the way up to a full ounce is practically the same thing of saying one gram all the way up to uh, 30 grams. And the reason why we say 30 grams is the pretty much practically the equivalent of an ounce is just for math purposes. It just makes things easier that way. So with that said, convert it if you will. But here's how it goes. If you put one gram or 0.10 of an ounce into a full ounce or into a full 30 gram formula, that's just going to enhance your shade. It's going to enhance your tone. And that's going to just help your formula a little bit. If you're going to start putting three grams, three to five grams, or if you're going to start putting uh, point, you know, 2.3 ounces of a full ounce, that is going to start controlling your formula a little bit. It's, it's, so let, let's back up here for a second. Let's use something that you can wrap your mind around. We'll go with reds, a really popular example of this, okay? If you're using a 6RS, my favorite color, and you put one gram of the red accent in there, it's just going to make that red scarlet. It's going to make, I'll go over to the swatch here. 
So you can see what am I talking about? You go over the six RS, it's got that, that red scarlet series on the bottom right there. It's just going to make that red enhanced a little bit better. If you put three to five grams on a 30 gram or a, or if you put two or 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ounce on a full ounce formula, it's going to make that red scarlet look even deeper in or even richer. Okay. If you put seven grams or if you put a half an ounce into a full ounce formula, or if you put seven grams into a 30 gram formula, now you're changing that color. It's not level six anymore. It is screaming, or excuse me, it's still level six. It's not just a red scarlet, scarlet. It's not a red violet base anymore. Now it's a screaming red. So for creative differences, using these accents is really, really awesome. When it comes to blondes, this is where people get nervous because they always add too much. If I take a beige, if I take 10B, blonde beige, right? And it's got that violet accent, that violet base. And I'm trying to knock out some of that warmth, some of that golden tones in there. If I put violet or if I put blue, what's going to end up happening is if as long as I put one ounce, uh, excuse me, one gram or 0.10 of an ounce in there, then I'm safe. It's not going to turn the hair blue or green. If I start putting 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ounces into a full ounce of violet or of green accent or of blue accent to try to knock out some of that gold, if I put three to five grams of blue or violet or green accent into a 30 gram formula trying to knock out that golden tones, now I'm subject to porosity. If I am too light, it's going to grab. And that's where some of that drabbiness, some, uh, some of that ashiness ends up coming from. And that's where it starts getting dangerous. So you have to pay attention to how much you're mixing. And of course, if I put a, a half an ounce or, or, or if I put, you know, seven, eight grams, 10 grams into a 30 gram formula, into a full ounce formula, yeah, I'm not going to be a nice blonde anymore. I'm going to end up with that steel blue or that violet effect, you know, now, if you're going for a creative, some of those blondes out there have that, that, that tinge in their hair. And if that's what you're going for, that's how you're creating that you're using the 10 B in this example, that, that level 10 beige, you're using that color as your driver to attach and anchor itself into the hair. You're using the accent colors to give that hue because the hue at the end of the day is only ever topical. It can only ever stay topical. These don't have the positive pigments in them. They're just accent mixers. All right. Here's some visual examples of what we are talking about and some common mistakes that happens on screen here on the left hand side is the before picture on the right hand side is the after picture. Why am I showing both? Common mistakes that happens. Okay, there's a lot of things happening in, in here. Let's break this down on the left, on the before picture. You've got a lot of outgrowth, two, three inches of outgrowth, depending on how fast that hair grows. Now, when you're looking at the mid shaft, you could truly see there's a lot of brassiness in there. Why? Because it just didn't lighten or lift enough as much as the ends did. And the ends are lighter, obviously, but they still have some warmth in there. When you're looking on the, on the top half of the hair, then you can see it lightened a little bit. When you get to the mid shaft, you can see it's a little bit lighter. And when you get to the ends, there's still some lightness in there. Why is it so important to lift up and look around the occipital bone? That's where you're truly going to see what's going on. On the top of the head, it gets the color gets diffused more from photosynthesis, the sun, uh, just blow drying, excessive flat ironing. That pigment on the top of everybody's head gets beat up and diffused naturally more often. You're truly going to see what's going on when you lift up the hair and you look at the occipital bone area. That's where you're going to get your true read of how much pigment is in that hair. All right. Now, here we go. A lot of people get scared to use high lift developer, 30, 40 volume is what I'm talking about. Everybody wants to use 
uh, 10 volume or 20 volume when lightning or when lifting. Okay, fine. I'm not saying one is good. I'm not saying one is bad. Here is the reality check. Everybody's magic processing time is 30 minutes. Nobody wants to leave anything on longer than 30 minutes. Now, with 10 volume or with 20 volume, yes, 30, 30 minutes of processing is the correct amount of time. But 10 volume, beauty school basics, only gives you up to one level of lift. 20 volume only wants to give you up to two levels of lift. But Eddie, people say, when I use it with Lightner, those are different rules. It continually works. Yes, it does. 10 volume works very slow. To achieve four or five levels of lift, you need an hour. For 20 volume, to achieve four or five levels of lift, you need 45 minutes. So if you're only leaving it on for that magic 30 volume and you're expecting everything to do what it's supposed to do, it ain't going to happen. You're only at best only ever going to get three to four levels of lift, which most people like this example here have a natural level four, level five. Okay. And they want to be like the end result down there, blonde, white, no warmth, no brassiness. It's just not practical. Okay. That is, that is not, you are not controlling the expectation in that example. You need 30 volume. You need 40 volume. It's going to work more aggressively. It's going to work harder and stronger. And that's what you want. Now, 40 fun fact, 40 volume for 20, 30 minutes does the same amount of damage and lightning control as 10 volume sitting on there for an hour. Okay. 30 volume developer for 30 minutes does the same amount of damage and lightning control as 20 volume does for 45 minutes. If you are watching it, it is not going to destroy the hair. And let's rewind here. We were talking about tools that we have. Okay. If you've clarified somebody, if you if you put the hair protonizer to detangle them out before you apply the product, if you put some lightener control and you put some pure oil in the hair, you are not going to mess anything up. You're going to be protecting the hair as best as possible. And you watch them. Another thing. Oh, I don't want to sit for 30, 40, 50 minutes and watch lightener and watch bleach. I'm busy. I'm going to throw them under the dryer. Well, guess what? When you're putting them under a dryer, that's dry heat. It's topical heat. It's drying out your formula. It's drying out your viscosity of, of your lightener. And the drier bleach or lightener gets, the less it works. So you're actually gimping yourself by doing that. The only true thing that's going to work well is putting them under a steamer, under a vaporizer. You're getting that moisturized heat. That's going to keep your product moisture retain the moisture in there. And that's what's going to help it continually work. With all of that said, you get them lightened up, you get them blonded up. Now you're going to try to balance them out. Or what's really popular right now is smudge roots. Yeah. So I'm telling you two different things here. Creatively. Okay. Technically, if you go to blonde them up, you really need to let that product sit on there to blonde them up properly. And then you go back to what we was talking about. If you get them to levels only level seven level eight on that contributing pigments you got to knock that out here we'll rewind here for a second right they're more orange than they are gold you need your slate series if you got them and they're looking kind of equal brassy gold and orange you need your cools if you knock them out and they're looking more gold than they are orange that's your pearls and if you got them to a nice golden state those are your beiges and then you can get them nice and blonde Creatively, here is something you can do very interesting with toning. You can use your C's, the C series, a 9C or a 10C. You can add some accent into it. You can mix it with the blue CPL developer, and you can run that over what's already existing here. When you're looking at the finished result on the right-hand side, if you're looking at the top of the head, you can see it's still a little bit dark. 
And then as you look down towards the mid shaft and through the ends, you could see it's a very nice gradient, a natural soft result. And then you're getting into from dark to medium to very light blonde. But let's not kid ourselves. Look at the ends, at the very, very ends around the shoulder blades down there, all right? You could still see some warmth because she was not lightened enough. But the hair from the top of the head is has become nice and platinum. And also for the styling, this hair has been finished with some kind of beachy wave, some kind of iron work, some kind of curls. So it's masking the true amount of brassiness that's left over in there. All right. Now, our moving along to our next example, you got some highlighting and low lighting going on. And this is another example of how you could do some really fun things. Personally, the left hand side is the warm example. The right hand side would be a toned cooler example. All right. I personally love the left hand side. I love the multidimensional effect and coming up uh, in, in, in the next spring, summer, se uh, summer season that, 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 that's going to be hitting us shortly. You're going to start seeing a lot of this left hand side. This is what's going to be trending. Okay. There's going to be a, free a, a new balayaging version of of balayage and they're going to be calling that palming and that's the left hand side is going to be some of the effects that you're going to be able to create with the new technique of balayaging which is which is the palming technique okay and that's multi-dimensional color it's beautiful highlight low lighting it's everything we've been doing for foils for 20 years but it's been an updated way of doing it and it's going to be a lot of fun when you want to create the right hand side, when you want to tone some of this out, this is where keratin, the demi glaze color, really shines. Demi glaze has two developers. It's got well, it's got four developers. You got you got demi, demi plus, twenty volume, forty volume. But for toning purposes, the two developers we're going to be talking about is the demi and the Demi Plus developer. I get a lot of questions asked about these two developers. When, what's the difference and when to use them? All right, your Demi Glaze is your standard developer. It's your standard toner. It's gonna give you all the depositing pigment that you need to knock out as much as that unwanted warmth as possible. The Toning Plus, it's a little bit more aggressive and it's gonna give you a little bit of horizontal movement, movement of tone within the same level. Will it bump? Will it lightning? Will it lift? Maybe a little bit. It depends on the natural level of what you're working with, your client's natural level. It also depends on the amount of porosity that your client has. If your client has very damaged hair, then that Demi Plus developer, although not much stronger, might give you some movement. In this example on the right-hand side for the cooler effect, you can go in with a slate, the 8CS, you can dilute it with clear, you can mix it with Demi Plus Developer, and you can run this through the hair, let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, and you've got a beautiful, you, you've very quickly and easily achieved a very beautiful result, okay? If you were going to do this with the cream color, you would take 8C, 9C, dilute it with, again, the clear, the zero stroke, zero, zero, uh, you can even add a little bit of the elevator. So what would that look like? You take 30 grams of 9C, you take 10 grams of clear, you take two grams of elevator. So 30, 10, and two totals 42. You'd put 42 grams of blue developer, the CPL blue developer, and you would run that from scalp to ends. That's a lot of formula, but she, this is long hair. So you need that much color, right? You run that through, you let, and then you watch it. Five, 10 minutes, because cream color is a little bit thicker. So it's going to absorb, uh, excuse me, I, 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 I'm saying that backwards. Because cream color is thicker, it's going to take a little bit longer before it starts moving. But when it does, it's going to start toning out the porosity way faster. Demi glaze being liquid takes a little bit longer 
to anchor the deposit in. You're going to see the movement of tone faster, yes, but it's going to take a little bit longer for it to anchor itself in because it's liquid. One shampoo equals two minutes of toning with liquid. Okay. Uh, so every two minutes is one shampoo. So if you're trying to get 10 shampoos out of something, yeah, you're going to need about 10 to 15 minutes of toning with demi glaze. But with CPL, with cream color, you know, five, 10 minutes, if, if the color can sit on there for about five or 10 minutes, it's going to anchor itself in and it's going to last pretty well. So that's a great question. And it was the perfect time to ask that question because it was right in the middle of, of just as I was answering and, and giving that information. So thank you very much for that question. Our next example, this is a common mistake as well. Okay. You get somebody comes in and they're just a hot mess. They've grown out way too long. They've got a lot of cold shaft going on in there. They've got a lot of previous color. They were uh, level six, level seven on the ends. They had some prior color that's grown out. And, and then you're thinking, you know what? That color's faded pretty good. I can get them, you know, I, I can lighten them out and just blonde them all out and it'll break that base. And then what ends up happening? It doesn't break the base. And when it doesn't break the base, you end up with the top half of their head is lighter, the bottom half of their head is darker, okay? Or it's more brassy. Or the, the, the ends didn't bleach out a lot, if at all. So what ends up happening? You're focusing too much on the top half of the head and you're seeing, oh man, this got nice and blonde up there. So, so because it got nice and blonde up there, I wanna use the beige series or I wanna use the pearl series. This, is where two formulas really come into play because you are absolutely correct. For the top half of that head, those highlights have been lightened up and they are a very nice, pretty blonde. You do need to use a pearl or a beige, a blue violet or a violet tone to knock that out. And it could equally be done with either one, whether you're doing it with the CPL with the pearl series or the beige series in the cream color, or you could do it with its counterpart in the demi glaze, in the keratin, with ten uh, p or 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 ten b with demi glaze developer, this would be a perfect example of when you would use straight demi glaze developer, not developer plus. But when you're looking at the mid shaft towards the ends, look at how much brassiness is in there. You can't you can't just put in a full straight pearl over that or a beige over that. It's just not enough to knock that out. This is where you need the slate series. And a lot of people get scared to put the slate series over the top of that head because they think it's going to turn it green. But look at the Mitch after the ends. You can't expect one formula to do the work of two separate issues. So you take 8CS and you're like, oh, but I don't want it to get dark. This is where we were talking about our tools earlier. You take your zero stroke, zero, zero, you're clear. Okay. So if you take one gram of 8CS, you take a 10 to one ratio, you take one gram of 8CS and you take 10 grams of clear. This is where it's going to start turning it into that pastel effect that I was talking about or that sheer effect of what I was talking about. All right. And that's where you're really going to turn that level eight into the equivalent of becoming like a level nine or a level 10. And that's how you start knocking out all that brassiness and you start getting with that right side result. Because if you really, really look at this, let's not kid ourselves either. Let's be very realistic. The after picture looks beautiful. Of course it does. But really, really, really look at the mid shaft and the ends comparing to the top of the head. You can see the ever hint of some brassiness is still in there. It's hidden very beautifully. And this is a finished result. It looks great, but it's still hidden in there. All right. So 
there is no magic way to do this. The only magic way to do this is to truly go in and double process that mid shaft to the ends furiously multiple times. You'd need lightener control. You need your oil. You need your blue lightener. You'd need your blue 20 or for the volume developer. And you'd have to keep going and going and going and let it sit on there and wait for it to eventually break that base so you can get it to a proper level of lightning. All right. Another example I'm going to give you is this. Now, this is a brunette, and this is more uh, the, the before and the after. There isn't that much of a difference. The reason why there isn't that much of a difference is because it's been refreshed with demi-glaze. All right. This is that browning that everybody's talking about. That's going to also, it's currently trending right now and it's going to get more popular with the spring and the summer that's coming up. All right. That browning is taking the tobacco series, taking the chocolate series, taking the sun series, anything that's got a, a red or an orange or a golden brown base to it and turning it into a toner and just refreshing something that's already existing. It's a lot of fun and it's really beautiful. A common mistake that I see a lot and anybody that's ever sat in a class with me ever knows I am not trying to say anything bad about the N series, but for the love of God, stop toning with the N series. The N series is for coloring, if you want to do gray coverage, if you want to do just a natural effect on somebody, that's where a lot of people use the N series and it works. Of course it does. The N series is the number one of, of all the series sells the most because everybody uses that the most. For the love of God, 60% of Illinois has level five, six or seven N in their formula, okay? So I'm not saying anything bad about it. The only difference is when you are toning, let's rewind back to the beginning of this presentation. The N series, or excuse me, the toner, a toner is to remove unwanted warmth or to balance out an unwanted pigment that's left over. If you are using the N, the N is the natural series. It's the balance of red, yellow, and blue. You're going to end up putting back everything that you just tried to take out. That's why N's do not work as toners. All right. You use a tobacco, which got a golden uh, base to it. Use a chocolate that's got a warm base to it, a, a sun series that's got an orange base to it. Hell, you can even use the mocha series. It's got a violet base to it. It just depends creatively which direction you're trying to go. But the point is you're using something to knock out something else. And that's where this before and after picture shows there isn't that much of a difference of variation in level, but in horizontal movement like we were talking about. This is how you can easily achieve this effect. All right. And coming down to our fruit punch trend, which is uh, the one that was advertised for this particular toning university, it could be literally done over any one of these examples that we had prior put. So the first example where the first example where it's just way far grown out and there's just, there's, there's just, you know, this person just might be sick and tired of trying to get blonde and they're not hitting their blonde result. Somebody who was already multidimensional to begin with. Somebody who you tried to lighten out and it just didn't, the, 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 the pre-existing color just didn't break and it, and it didn't bleach out or blonde out. Or somebody is already a brunette and they just want to have a little bit of fun with it. This fruit punch tone will work on all of the above, all right? For the base, so, so this is truly done in two different ways. You can take half a, the, the head or you could take a triangle section. You could take a big panel in the bangs or around the framing, however you want to creatively do it. On short hair, as you can see, her front bangs 
was taken out in a big triangle pattern, starting from the top of the head, working out towards the corners of the eyebrows. Okay, so that's how they created that big fat triangle. And they made that with one formula. And then on the back of the head where it's shorter, they did it with a second formula. When you have somebody who's got long hair, you could take out a panel across the top. You could, you could simply go around the round of the head, the parietal ridge of the head, take everything off the, from the top there, make that one formula, and then take everything underneath, do it with a darker formula. You could do zigzag patterns. You could do anything you want. You could just simply go around the framing and do that as one color and do the rest of the hair as the second color. You could, you, you, your creative interpretation is what makes this look fun. The first formula, which is a little bit more coppery, is going to be your intense copper series, your 8IS. So you take three quarters of 8IS, you take one quarter of pink, your fashionizer pink, and you mix all of that together with uh, some elevator. So what it looks like, the breakdown is three quarters of an ounce of 8IC, one quarter of an ounce, fashionizer pink. You take about another quarter of an ounce of elevare, and then you take a full ounce of developer, CPL developer, okay? You mix that all together. Taking a quarter of an ounce at that elevator is going to start eating away at the level eight IC, and it's going to make it the equivalent of approximately a level nine. The quarter of an ounce of the fashionizer pink that you're adding in with the eight IC, what's going to happen? Fashion colors do not have bases. That's why they do not last. That's why they wash out very quickly. Using the 8IC in this example is giving you a permanent color as a driver base to anchor into the hair to make it last longer. The pink is diffusing the intense copper base and it's turning it more of a orange, okay? But it's giving it a little bit of a hue of a different fun hue in there. It's not just a straight orange. When mixing that over a pre-existing base, that's where that fun is going to come in. The second color that's used in this uh, trend is 8RS. Now you could take 8RS straight by itself. That's fire engine red. And that's fun. You could take 8RS uh, with demi glaze and run that through. You could take 8RS with CPL and run that through. You can alternatively take 8RS with 20, 30, or 40 volume developer because you're putting it over pre-lightened hair or a dark hair to begin with, whatever you're doing, level eight is so dark, you can dilute it with developer. It'll eat away at some of the pigment. It'll eat away at some of the base and you'll end up with the equivalent of a level nine. Now, if that makes people nervous because you're putting permanent color to tone, that's fine. The deposit only equivalent of that would be 8RS with uh, CPL developer cream or uh, like the white or the blue. Blue CPL developer with red based colors give you a different variation of depth and tone. Okay. Taking 8RS in keratin. This would be an example of where you would want to use it with the Demi Plus developer. That's going to give you a different variation of tone. All right. And you mix those two um, in, in whatever placement pattern that you decided to do. Those two colors complement each other very, very well. And that is the quickest, most simple way to create this fruit punch trend that is really popular right now. All right. And that is going to wrap it up for all of our formulas for the Toning University. You guys got more questions. Definitely hit us up in the comment section here. And I'll stay on a little bit longer afterwards to answer any of the questions that somebody may have. Another resource that all of you may or may not know about is if you go to uh, Facebook, we have a private group on there. We're going to be starting a YouTube channel 
you definitely want to subscribe to either one of those two places and you're going to be able to be in a community of other hairdressers like yourself and you're going to have direct access to us educators where you're going to be able to share ideas pictures designs and you're going to be able to be kept up to date with what we got going on the next toning university is going to be in two weeks and that one depending on how the weather is may go over the palming technique of balayaging or we'll take, if the weather isn't supportive enough during that time, we'll break down another coloring trend of what's going on during the, that time, all right? So I wanna, um, I thank everybody for coming today and spending the time with us. Definitely let us know what your guys' thoughts are, what you guys are struggling with, what you guys are having fun with, and as always, I appreciate everybody joining us today. Thank you very, very much, everybody.